Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Monday, February 1, a new month already. I uh, want to thank those of you that continue to watch these videos, those of you that continue to share these videos to get the word out to more and more people from all over the world, which is which is fascinating. Good morning, John. Good morning, Barb. Good morning, Sherry. Uh, thank you for your donation. We appreciate that very, very much especially from someone young like you. That is just so awesome. Uh, we're going to look at something, uh, to, to study something today that's probably the, one of the most misunderstood teachings in the Bible. I see it all over the social media where it's misinterpreted. Morning, Kim. Uh, let's read what we're going to study today in Matthew chapter 7. We're still in the Sermon on the Mount. Morning, Grace. Morning, Serena. Morning, John. Uh, Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For whoever asks, receives. Those who seek, find. Those who knock, and the door will be opened. Which of you, if a son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Okay, <coughs> what is Jesus saying now in these verses? Now here's a way. Good morning, Roz. Good morning, Marcy. Good morning, Barb. Uh, we have to realize now that uh, who Jesus is talking to uh, this remember, this is at the beginning of his ministry. Uh, this is his first teaching that he's doing now to the crowds. Uh, they didn't even know yet who he was. Morning, Veronica. They didn't know yet who he was. They didn't know yet he, yet, yet he was from God, that he was God. They didn't know any of that yet. All they knew was that he could. He had great teaching, and he, and he taught with power. So let's look at each of the promises. The first one, he says, is ask, and it will be given to you. For the one who asks, receives. Then the second one, seek and you will find. For those that seek, find. And then the last one, knock and the door will be opened to you. Now, this knock and the door will be opened to you in Revelation. And we'll go to Revelation chapter 3 where, it's, where Jesus says this in Revelation. It says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them, and them with me. Jesus knocks on the door to our heart. He knocked on the door to your heart, each of you, and you opened the door and allowed him into your life. That's what Jesus meant when he said, knock, knock, and the door will be open to you. Now, here's what's amazing to me. I was talking to my brother last night. Uh, we, we were watching... Uh, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? And I was telling him about a time when years ago in the, one of the shows when when the, he got to the million dollar question and he said he went, it's going to call his dad to get help. And when he calls his dad, he tells his dad, I just want to let you know that I'm going to be a millionaire because he knew the answer. I knew the answer. It was how far is the sun from the earth? And it was 93 million miles. And then I was telling my brother about how big the universe is, just, just humongous. So how big our God is, how big our God is that created all that. And then it amazes me that there's still so many people that refuse to believe in that God. Yet he knocks on the door of every heart, I believe, every heart, but so many don't open that door. Be so thankful. Be so thankful, Paul. Be so thankful, Ryan. Be th so thankful, Ashley. Be so thankful, Veronica, that you heard Jesus knocking and opened the door and allowed him into your life. Uh, and then the second one was, well, was seek and you will find him in, in Proverbs. It says this in Proverbs 8, 17. It says, I love those who love me. And those who seek me, find me. So he says, open the, seek me. Those who seek me will find me. And those who open the door when I knock on it, I will come into their lives. But here's the one now that's the most misunderstood that we want to look at this morning. Um, 
And, and that's the one where ask and it will be given to you. Uh, that's the one that's so misquoted. I can understand why. Uh, let me just read some of the verses that would make it appear that way. In Matthew 18, 19 through 20, he tells us this. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Doesn't it make it sound now like we should receive whatever we ask for? However, we're, here's what we have to be careful of. We have to be careful when we're reading scripture who Jesus is talking to. In these verses here, Jesus is talking to his disciples. We'll go back to 18.1 at the beginning of that chapter. Said, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him. So this is not the Sermon on the Mount where he's talking to the crowds. This lot of the scripture is when he's teaching the disciples. And when he teaches the disciples, it's very different what he says to them than what he says to the crowds or what he says to us. Why? Because Jesus used his disciples mightily to build his kingdom. Uh, he gave them incredible powers, incredible powers. Here, here's just some right here. It says, they will pick up snakes with their hands. They will drink deadly poison and it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. Jesus did mighty things through the disciples because he was building his kingdom and he was trying to show who he was. And so he gave his disciples incredible power that he didn't give to, that he didn't give to us. Uh, in John 14, 13 through 14, he says this, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Again, to the disciples. 15, 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. So just numerous verses, numerous verses where it says that. So I could see why people would read those verses and misinterpret them thinking that, well, if I believe and if I ask the Jesus, then I should receive it. And then when we don't, we start wondering why we didn't receive what we asked for. Is like a scripture not true? Why is it? I, I did exactly what Scripture told me to do, and I didn't receive. Because, because he wasn't talking to us. He was talking to the disciples. So here's the verse that, that explains it to us, okay? In 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Listen to this one now. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. We know that we will receive what we asked of him if it's according to his will. His perfect will. Now, Again, go back to what I shared at the beginning, how big God is. A, a, a God that created this vast, vast universe that literally has no end to it. How big is that God? That God created us. That God knows us. That God knows what's best for us. And so God answers our prayers according to his will because he knows what we need and what we don't need. That's why when people tell me, well, God did not answer my prayer. And I said, yes, he did. He, he promises that he answers every one of our prayers. But his answers are yes, no, and wait. So when you ask God for something and you don't receive it, he's either saying no or he's saying wait. If you do receive it, it's because he said yes, because it was according to his will, his perfect will. So if it's his will, we get what we ask for. If it's not, we don't get what we ask for. It is that simple. But boy, you have to believe this. You have to believe that God loves you and that God listens to your prayer and that God cares about you and that God answers every one of your prayers according to his perfect will. Let's go back to our reading. It says, which of you, if, a person, if your child asks for bread, would give them a stone? Or if they ask for fish, we give them a snake. 
If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? If you as a parent, and most of you watching this are parents, if you as a parent know how to give to your children, know when to say yes, when to say no, when to say wait, if we know, and we're not perfect, we make mistakes, but if we do it with our children, how much more will God do it with us, his children, perfectly? Perfectly. Answering our questions, our, our prayers, perfectly, according to his perfect will. So I, I hope you understand now when, when you read these verses or when you see, I see people all the time on Facebook or something quoting one of those verses, ask whatever, have faith, have faith and you will be healed. Uh, uh, believe and you will receive. Rece oh, but boy, we have to realize who Jesus was talking to because he gave special powers to his disciples because he was building his kingdom. It was, it was a kingdom that's, that was built way back 2,000 years ago that is here today. And he built it through his 12 disciples. I should say 11 because one of them betrayed him. He built it through his 11 disciples. So he gave them incredible, incredible gifts and powers that he didn't just give to everyone. So I hope this helps you so when you pray, you understand how your prayers get answered. Uh, so thank you for watching. <clears throat> um, if this answered questions of yours, make sure you're willing to share this so it can answer questions for other Christians out there or even for unbelievers. Uh, tonight is our special message. I'm going to be doing a special message for Irene, Liz's mom who passed away. I will be giving a special message about for, for her. Uh, so that's at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, for the rest of you, I will uh, see you again tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock for our daily devotion. Thank you so, so much for watching these, for your commitment to these. Uh, it's, it, it humbles me. It humbles me that you're willing to listen to me to, uh, to learn more about God. Have a great day. And if you're willing, share this video. God bless you all.